you know, when we look at silver and we zoom in on this monthly chart, there is a very kind of significant trend at play here, which is a series of lower highs and a series of lower lows. And that's the definition of a downtrend. And right now it is trading right up in this previous high. It's uh, definitely at resistance and it's kind of been rejected. And it's starting to move lower. Uh, so it's not the most bullish sign for silver uh, in near term. I still think we're going to see silver potentially sell off quite a bit, move back down. I think there's so still another six, eight months probably before we see the precious metal space potentially become a, a rocket ship type of play where they go up and up and to the right for, I think, three, five, seven years, a big, a big leg higher. Over the past year, there has been record high demand for gold, silver and some other precious metals. This, in addition to the changing dynamics in the geopolitical zone and the chaotic state of the United States economy, has prompted many analysts and veteran precious metals investors to predict an upcoming massive breakout in the prices of the leading precious metals. Analysts and investors in this category believe gold and silver prices could take off any day as soon as it begins to dawn on more people how fast things are changing in the investment scene. But one analyst is taking a different approach to the precious metals market. Chris Vermoylan is a technical analyst, trader, author, and founder of the TechnicalTraders.com, a platform that helps individual investors, financial advisors, and wealth managers to protect their investments and manage risk. With over 25 years of experience in the financial markets, Chris has analyzed and traded many precious metals bull markets, and he believes another one is just around the corner for gold and silver. But Chris is not as optimistic as other analysts who are calling for an immediate boom especially since both assets recently dropped to their lowest price since June 8th. According to Chris, we might yet see more downtrends in silver, the more volatile precious metal, which has been known to drop by 6 or even 8% within a short period compared to gold's usual 1-2% to drops. As a result of its extremely volatile nature, at least compared to gold, Chris is not ruling out another 20-25% to drop in silver in the short term. For gold, which he describes as the world's top safe haven asset, Chris is slightly less bearish. While he recognizes that the shifting geopolitical dynamics could give the leading precious metals some fuel in the short term, the technical analyst believes a massive breakout might be elusive for a few more months. But Chris's bearish sentiments for both gold and silver are in the short term. Like every other analyst and trader, the trading capital founder is expecting a higher leg up for both precious metals in the midterm. He believes that could happen any time between the next six months or a year. This higher leg up, Chris says, will really usher in the precious metals bull market, which he expects will last for at least five years. Chris discusses his outlook for both silver and gold in a recent interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we bring you clips from the interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below so the video can reach more viewers. Thanks and enjoy the video. Uh, gold is very similar, except for it's um, it's trading up near all time highs. If we zoom way back here, you know, uh, silver is equivalent to trading down like, you know, 50 percent from the highs where gold is just threatening to break out. That's because gold is the global safe haven. It's a, a slower moving asset. So investors can put more money into it. Um, you know, a big day on gold is like one, one and a half percent. Big day in silver is like eight or 10 percent. So you got to be obviously more cautious with silver. But when we look at the monthly chart here of gold, when you and I were talking, gold was was in pushing up here, threatening to break out. But all the market internals around the precious metal space at that time, I was telling you, are, are very bearish. It all it all breaks down to the time frame of trader or investor you are. So you could argue here we do have a series of higher lows. We have a series of higher highs. So in the shorter term time frame, it is oscillating and trending higher and it has been down near a support level it's starting to bounce so short-term traders you know you look at this little trend you know it's in a very short-term trend to the to the upside this longer term view that lasts you know you know about a year almost uh this is also kind of trending higher as well but the long-term charts those patterns typically trump all the shorter shorter plays. So you got to be aware that, uh, you know, if we were to look at the silver chart, it's actually got a, a move down. And this little trend up is known as a bear flag pattern, which is the halfway point 
uh, for a move. So we can use uh, Fibonacci extensions, which is one of my favorite tools, is the most accurate technical tool that I know. I've used it for, for decades. It tells us where price is headed next. And it's based on the sell-off and the, the bounce. That is telling us how much downside potential there is. So right now, silver has got the potential to drop to $21, which is about a 12% decline. And, uh, and that's kind of where that short-term chart is pointing to. So, you know, you can break a chart down, if they're fractal, you can break it down to any time frame and you'll keep flipping between an uptrend or a downtrend as you move uh, time frames. The key is to understand what the longer term time frame is, like the tide of, of like the, you know, the ocean. If silver tide is naturally going up, then you want to be looking at buying dips on the shorter term trends. Uh, but right now, the monthly chart of silver, as we talked about, is is the tide is going down. It's in a long term downtrend. It's at resistance. And I'd be very aware uh, that if you're going long here, it better be for a, a quick play and you better be very aggressive to protect your profits because if it starts to roll over, it can move a lot lower uh, back down to the 18 uh, level or, or beyond. During the interview, Chris also gives his worst short term prediction for silver. According to the veteran technical analyst, a worst case scenario for silver will be a 20 to 25 percent drop from its current price. As of press time, the silver spot price on Bullion Vault is $23.91 per ounce. A 20% drop will see the precious metal drop below $19 per ounce, while a 25% drop will have it trading at $18 an ounce. The last time silver traded in that range was in October 2022. Chris believes a financial reset is imminent for both gold and silver and the overall financial markets. He believes it would be prompted by the tech and AI bubble burst, which would send the stock market into a spin and force investors to liquidate even their silver and gold positions. The technical analyst also gives his outlook on whether the U.S. Federal Reserve will announce a pause this week and how such an announcement will impact the markets. Based on this initial little chart pattern here, oh, $21 is that, uh, that downside potential. Uh, if it bounces at that level, and it uh, forms another bear flag, it would probably be a larger bear flag, then we're probably going right back down to 18. Uh, so it'll definitely do quite a bit of damage uh, to the to the price action, you know, pretty much $24 right now, 18. Uh, that'll be a pretty major bottom. A lot of support will be down there. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of downside potential. If it falls down there, investors need to know that's a 25% haircut. Uh, which is not easy to stomach. Uh, and I mean, I've talked to a lot of different financial advisors and when any asset drops more than 8%, investors start to get really uncomfortable and panic. And, um, you know, it's not something you really want to, you want to hold on to if it's going down. You can always buy it later, hopefully at a lower price, or you can always buy it later when it's in a new uptrend and it's going to go higher for years instead of, like, if you look at this chart, it's pretty noisy. It's all over the place. That is a roller coaster ride for somebody with, you know, who just wants to kind of buy and hold it and, and ride that out. It's There's other assets to be in. We're along the NASDAQ right now. One of our positions there, we're up, uh, we just hit a 30% target at the opening bell today. Um, with with that play. So instead of sitting here with your money in, you know, potentially precious metals at the moment, you could be putting it into other sectors or, or assets that are rising. And when there's a financial reset and the precious metals space starts another major bull market, puts in a bottom, which you and I will be covering when that time comes, it's going to be the time to like buy physical metals and uh, and load up because I think that'll be the time it you know, we go into a five plus year rally in metals and we've been waiting for it for a long time and we're close. I feel like we're months, you know, half a year, maybe a year away at the most, I think, but we're, we're, we're getting there. It is, it, it's going to be a big roller coaster. And, and the problem is if the stock market eventually rolls over and sells off, like right now, the stock market is in, well, the indexes are in rally mode. You look at the NASDAQ, it's heading up. It looks like it wants to try and make a major double top. The SP 500 is in rally mode. But, you know, for example, last Friday, I was watching the markets, they all closed positive, but almost every sector was red, closed down on the day, but technology. Technology and the AI movement and semiconductor space uh, with Tesla and Apple, part of that rally, you know, everybody thinks the markets are doing really well, but almost most stocks are going down, yet the indexes are going up. And that's just, you know, it's a house built of cards. And when when that wave this kind of tech bubble kind of growth stock wave ends here 
uh, things are going to get ugly. We're going to see a massive sell-off, I think, in in all asset classes, including precious metals. It's going to create that financial reset. And um, miners and metals are going to be probably the one of the first sectors to bottom, just like they have in the past when we've gone through financial resets after the tech bubble, you know, after um, the financial crisis 2008. So their, their time is coming for sure. And it is going to be a roller coaster. The Fed might move price action a little bit, uh, but overall, uh, there's there's bigger things at play. We're in a much larger economic cycle and a, just an overbought cycle for, for assets a- across the board, especially like real estate and stocks still. Uh, so they're, they're usually behind the ball in what's happening, and they're always kind of reactive, uh, not proactive, it seems. So uh, it's going to be interesting. They always cause a lot of movement, but uh, they don't totally dictate the trend of the market. After 10 consecutive rate hikes that have taken its benchmark rate to the highest level in 16 years, the U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to announce a pause on Wednesday. This will undoubtedly come as a relief for the overburdened market. However, Fed officials believe this will not be the end of the rate hikes as inflation is still above the central bank's 2% target. They are characterizing this as a skip rather than a pause. And its main purpose is to give the economy a little more time for the central bank's aggressive rate hike campaign to filter through. The Fed started hiking rates over a year ago, and research shows that it takes at least a year for rising interest rates to broadly affect the real economy. So this pause or skip will help the Fed analyze the effect of its aggressive rate hikes on things like employment and consumer spending. It could also help them avoid tipping the economy into a recession or reduce its impact if we do go into one. Do you think the Fed has already broken the economy? How do you expect the market to react to a pause after all the rate hikes? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.